Hope that's better. All right, so welcome to the uh, special meeting of the uh, Building Commission. Um, Larry Wall, our Building Commissioner, is not here. I think given the fact he's not here, we should vote on who's going to be meeting in his stead. Open the floor to nominations. Any other nominations? All in favor, say aye. All right, I'm running a meeting. All right, so there's only one agenda item, uh, and that is um, to consider the, actually reconsider the permit application for 2948 Lakeshore Drive. At the last meeting, uh, we approved that permit application pending us receiving the uh, demarcation of the natural ordinary high water mark uh, on the site plan. However, since then, some more information uh, came to light. Um, I personally was under the impression that the homeowner owned all three lots. It turns out he only owns the western two lots, which on the site plan and actually at the site uh, makes it appear that uh, part of that retaining wall on the eastern side um, is at least within the setback, the side setback, and, and that's probably the case on the northern part of it. On the southern edge of the property, it looks like the retaining wall may even exist on the property line or over the property line. Uh, the plan we got uh, from them showed that they wanted to put a revetment on the uh, outside of that retaining wall, which would put the revetment at least part of it on the neighbor's property. And we can't give a permit to build on somebody else's property. So uh, Pete Bivotes and I, uh, along with uh, Glenn, the contractor, visited the site yesterday. Um, and indeed, that does look like it's the case. So we are ways to uh, um, allow them to at least protect their property. Um, the big issue that I think we need to deal with today is that that property is in some jeopardy. Um, the northern, all across the northern part behind their seawall, as anybody who went there saw, they've got a lake in their, in their backyard or front yard or whatever you want to call it. And their backyard is being eroded. It's probably within 20 feet of the house now uh, with kind of a cliff there. Uh, the concern is that a big storm is going to erode that away pretty rapidly and the house could fall in the lake. Um, and, you know, we're expecting big storms come fall. Um, their plan involves to put a retaining wall across that northern where the cliff is and then put a revetment uh, on the north side of that. Um, that re right, and in fact, well inside of 106.6. Um, so my thought is, is that that's really a retaining wall. It's not a seawall. The revetment is a shore protection structure, but it's going to be inside of 106.6. Um, so my thought is, is that we could consider whether we want to allow them to put that retaining wall and revetment across the northern side of the property, but then stop where the um, side setback starts. And, and, and one issue there uh, is how much the side setback is. They own two lots, so the usual setback is 12 feet. But actually, if we're calling that uh, revetment a shore protection structure, the latest amendment to the shore protection ordinance says they can go within a foot and a half of the property line. So my thought would be that they could go across to a foot and a half if they want to go further uh, or into that side setback, then they're going to need to go to the BZA. So that's that's my take on it, um, Joe. Number 
Okay. Yes, yeah, we, so it's not approved. Okay. Well, I mean, we, I don't think we can approve the condition yet. Yeah. Well, and regardless, we're revisiting it today. So yeah. it's not approved right now. Can you guys hear Joe through your computer? I want to be no. sure we're hearing Joe. No. Okay. I can't hear him. Joe, turn up the volume maybe where I turned it down. See if that makes a difference. Joe, what's your phone number? The last, last three numbers. Okay. What's the last three numbers of your phone number? Um, I'm going to try and find you on here and see if I can. Joe, unmute yourself. Okay, now I got to do it. How about now? There you go. Now you're coming through. Good. So start over from the beginning. Nobody could hear anything. Okay, so my first, my first comment was that I, I didn't think we approved this permit for under any conditions, but that doesn't matter because right now we've established that the permit is not approved and that's what we're discussing today. Okay. That's number one. Number two, if, if we have if we have a minute, because this is the only project that we have, before we get into I understand part of what you said, Bob, and, and you, you're, you're making some ideas, but the first thing that, that I would like to hear from the gentleman that's here, that's representing Woodruff, is what's been going on. And I see that there's been a lot of, uh, if work is the right word, but there's a lot of activity on the neighbor's property. And that's where you have your equipment and everything else. And I'm understanding that, you know, probably got somebody probably got approval from the neighbor. But I, I would think we should have that writing from the neighbor for everybody's protection to see. And the other thing is that what what are we doing in the neighbor's property? When when numerous times and um, I guess if, if looking at the diagram, I guess if I can try to direct things, and there's a there's a seawall that is right on the lake. That's the northern, if I could say that, the northern seawall. And that seawall extends across both the it's the same seawall. Now, I noticed that there are now, uh, and I don't know what we want to distinguish them as, the um, concrete um, blocks or protection that we have on highways. When you're building a highway, you put in these blo concrete blocks. Does everybody understand? Yeah. Okay. And what I what what I noticed as I'm as I'm standing there, and I, you know, I like to count, so I was, I'm a good counter. I counted all the way up to nine, and I saw that there were nine of these blocks across the top of that seawall. Now, how they got there, and whatever, and also realizing, uh, trying to distinguish where the property lines are. I believe that eight of those blocks are covering the, the petitioner's property. And one of those blocks going eastward is on covering on the neighbor's seawall. And also I noticed that there's also two blocks using these block things going east to west on the neighbor's property. So it looks like that's there, that's there for, for, for north to south, I apologize. Going north to south on the neighbor's property. And 
I see whatever whatever the material is, but there's a black something underneath there, and I and, and I and I understand that I believe what these are for. You can you can tell us that this is for protection from Lake Michigan. That's that's what I believe that is for. Now the question I have is, you know. I assume you people put it there. You can tell us if you did or didn't. And so I'm concerned on the property that we're talking about, which are lots 25 and 26 that, that he owns. So that's been put there, but also on lot 27, which is the neighbor's lot, we've done some work. There's a block that has been put on there. And then there's two blocks that are going north and south. And that gets back to my first comment or question is, I think we need something in writing from the neighbor to go over all of this. Now, if I could, I have, a, I have numerous questions, but maybe this would be a good time, Is it, if it's okay with everybody else, could you explain these blocks to what you guys have done are they temporary? Are they permanent? Because the, when I was there, uh, and I think it was I didn't go by this morning, but I think those blocks and the black, whatever you want to call it, looks like it's being successful because they look pretty dry in there, you know, right uh, on the south of those blocks. They look like I didn't see a lot of water. In the so could you just Say something about those words. Basically, the blocks are under, that's not uh, I mean, that was all the green to that put down there because the property without something needed. But, you know, I've never known that the town needed to see everything. But, yes, they're all on the board. I mean, Jim and Pete and I had another conference call last night on the day we what we're doing and everything else. I've met Pete on site, I've met Jim on site. But the, the barrier walls that you're referring to, they are strictly in there. Hey, Bruce, I, you need to unmute yourself. I just realized nobody can hear you. No, uh, it just popped up. Okay. There you go. Okay. Let, me start, let me start over. Quickly. Okay. Just just quick uh, summary. There, there is an agreement you know, that, uh, between Pete, the neighbor at 2952 and Jim at 2948. Um, that's the only way there's access to do this. So that bring was put in place before we ever even set the machine there. Um, the concrete barrier walls that you're talking about, yes, we brought those down there. They're strictly temporary. They will not hold up to any type of storm. All we're trying to do is keep the splash water down because you know, the water's so high, as everybody knows, the water just rolls right over that seawall all the time. So the black fabric you're referring to that is underneath, that's just there to try to the material under the concrete under the walls to watch now concrete barrier walls are temporary that it's a you know piece to work of them we discussed setting them on his property all that comes out when jim's new construction is complete is it delayed i was just waiting for you to okay now one question two two comments about the neighbor, uh, number one, I believe, you guys can correct me if it's wrong, that we should have a document that verifies you know, that the neighbor is allowing to do that. Then secondly, and I don't know, and you guys tell me, because of the work that's being done 
the equipment being do we need some kind of permit application well, yeah that that's yeah that's probably coming because for them to do what they propose they're going to need to go to the bza so the neighbor's going to have to be involved in that process can I, can, can I expand on that? I got I got a copy of their survey last night, so the a permit application be, can be submitted um, because part of what Pete and Jim have agreed to is right now the neighbor Pete has you know the old WPA wall, if that's what people refer to it as, the the lake wall. Then if you go back, he has a sheet pile wall that's been in there forever, which I got pictures of it um, that I can show you guys if you want to see the pictures. Then he has another seawall there where Jim had a substandard material put in that failed. Um, and the, the goal is when we rebuild the, the failed wall and then that rock revetment, they have discussed they would like to connect, which they had it on the plans that were submitted. Um, I don't think anybody really thought that AP needs an application to be it's on his property, but the rock revetment shows wrapping around and, and tying into Pete's seawall. That's on his property. Correct. Correct. So the the you can see that that the neighbor where that rock revet wraps around on there. You can see where it ties into the neighbor at twenty nine fifty two feet wall. Which so I thought that was one of the things we were on the phone about last night is we need to put a permit application after that rock revetment to be on Pete's property. Now, to me, one of the, the things that I think is important for the town too is they're going to pay to put if you want to call it that alley through there, you know, between the two properties, like where you see our excavator at and everything. Which that material that's in there that we're using as a ramp that also comes back out afterwards we restore back down to original grade but that's the only way to get equipment in there was to get that agreement between the two owners put the access road in there that material will come back out and at the end there will be rock revetment that then protects that property from 2948 to 2952 which the thing that i think is really good from the town's aspect then is everybody knows how bad last winter was I saw waves come all the way up last year to almost to Lakeshore Drive where our excavators park. So now that will be sealed off and give the town a protection for Lakeshore Drive that that water won't be busting all the way up through there again and present a, a possible problem. Um, as far as 2948, go ahead. Can, can we, and, and you're doing a great job and I appreciate it. I'm just slower, and I'm trying to go piece by piece, no if, if you don't mind. And then we can, no problem. We'll come back. Because, uh, so, what, what we, what, in my mind, what we've established so far is those, what do we call blocks, whatever we're calling them. Like Precast concrete. Those are temporary. Oh, the, oh, yeah, the barrier walls are temporary. Correct. So the barrier walls temporary. The black. With, whoop, that's, that's all temporary. temporary. That's there, so you so you don't have a big mess to work on. Okay. We've also established I correct that we're going to get a permit application from the neighbor. So then work being correct will be through a permit. Okay. So far, so good. Everybody with me? All right, now. So then, here, here's where I'm going now. Okay, so now I'm getting more into Mr. Vecchio's project, and that'll lead. Look, looking at Mr. Vecchio's, you know, again, this site plan, we call it. And the one thing I wanted to verify with everybody that I noticed is that the site plan was adjusted, I believe it was on June 
on June 10th. And that's when we had the revamp to the outside. That's, that's this, this stuff here. The revamp was always part of it. It wasn't on the other. No, that the final plan right. has the revetment, but the revetment was always part of this new this system. This was not on the previous documents. Correct, but what was submitted for okay. permit did have that on it. Okay, but I'm just saying, just so everybody knows, they have to go to the latest document to see the total picture. Okay, and then as I was down there, I noticed that we, we have stakes, Lakeward, and it shows where the 106 is and it's even painted on the on the neighbor's wall and stuff like that so i believe looking at if, if we can use your site plan as, as a reference point looking at your site plan any work is going to be permanent it looks to be all lakeshore drive side of one correct correct okay so that's correct. Establish that. So everything is lakes, uh, lakeshore dry side at 106. Now, where the natural ordinary high water mark falls, we don't know at this time. Okay. Now, so then, if, if I'm looking up, I'm going to bypass the revetment for a minute as I'm going down. There. And if you look at your diagram, you have a large right angle. That's in the top. Um, it's all right, right. And I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, I think it's correct looking at the diagram, that if I look at the north south black line, if we can call it a dark line or a black line, I believe that's pretty much the that is it's It's inside of the property line. Uh, I inches. No, I'm going to say I, we have to actually, you know, pull us because we've got it marked on both ends. If we went down there and pulled it and measured back, I'm going to say 16, 18 inches, something inside the property line. Okay. I, okay. Uh, I, I'm not going to argue I mean, that. That's, that's existing. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to argue that. We could, we could determine it. But it looks to me as I stand there, because like you say, you have, you have, you have the, uh, the stakes on the lakeside, but there are no stakes on Lakeshore Drive side. There, there might, yeah, there might be a pin. Right, there is a stake there. A pin. I can show it to you. And I thought there's a pin. You visually stake, stake because two points make a straight line. But anyway, there's there's a stake that's in the bushes. Okay. So, so we're we're saying that this black line going north and south is anywhere from on the property line to 18 inches off. Okay? Now, that I think is my look when I go down there is you're, are you saying that is the same location of this brick wall that was put in? Correct. Correct. The black line is the same location of where that brick wall is. Because the new wall basically ties into the existing wall. And, okay, so then what we're saying is that you're repairing, at this point, at that point there, you're repairing a wall that is, is, is prominent. Correct. At the right word? Yeah. I mean, and if you guys want to see any pictures, I got pictures of the failed wall okay. and everything else. Uh, we, we can, okay. I just want to establish in my head. So then now if I go back to uh, the north side of the house or, or the property and I look at the other black line, that's where we really don't see a wall because that wall washed away. Correct. And that's the location of where the wall was. Uh, not exactly, but you know. Give or take. Give or take. Okay. And I mean, I'm not sure anybody, because once we got there, the wall was already falling down, knows exactly where where it was. Okay. So so, so the first thing that we're talking about is this right, uh, right angle wall. 
and right. what I would call the northeast corridor is where you're talking right now. So I'm talking about the whole thing. Okay. The, you want, so I'm, I'm not talking about any revetment. I'm not talking about in front of that. Correct. Right. The first thing is you want to put in this wall that runs east, west, and north, south. Correct. And it replaces a deteriorating wall. Substandard. Substandard wall. And this wall is, I looked, not, not that I, I know that much, but I, I looked at your uh, paperwork you submitted. Seems like a big way of building a wall. I, you know, is that a newer, a newer method? It, it's a much newer method. It's uh, much more substantial than basically the stacked landscape block that was down there because. There's different size block that go in there, but like the bottom row of block uh, where your where your landscape block are roughly 16, 18 inches horizontally into the bank. The bottom two rows are six feet horizontally into the bank. So you have something much more substantial. Now that that is also designed with the revetment. So when Mr. Vecchio's done, he will have the old seawall. Who knows if the lake will come up over it, but then he will have the revetment as one form of protection, and then he has the precast material behind as another form of protection. So, so you're bringing in, so you're saying that the revetment and the precast wall go hand in hand. Correct. Okay, and that's why. Okay, but so number one, you want to put in the new wall now. Just from distance, as Bob said, and I didn't get the same distance, but if, roughly, if you look at it and you look at the wall that's going east to west, and if I just start at the at the begin at the closest point to Lake Michigan, which is right there on that wall, how far is that wall from the house? Do you have a feel for that? Mm, I'm gonna. I don't see a ruler. We can probably measure it. Probably. Uh... Thirty, thirty-three feet. Something in that area. Three feet from from the house. Or is that that well, I guess I'm looking at I'm looking at the porch also. Uh, to the face of the house, maybe closer to forty. So that that wall is about forty foot foot away. Correct. Okay, and. Since we brought up the revetment, I was I was going to do it at a different stage, but that's fine. Now, then the, the distance between the wall and the amount of revetment that you're going to put in Lake Ward is six feet. Six feet. So that everything stays beyond, but not beyond, behind the 106 line. Behind six feet. Correct. And it seems. I mean, the revetment will be out to 106, but the wall itself is at 100. Okay. So the revetment is going to be right there at 106. Correct. Okay. But like I said, we still don't know the natural order of the water, which is a, a number of miles around. She's, she's going to be there tomorrow morning. It's going to be difficult for us to make a decision without that number, I believe. That, that's just my opinion. All right. Now, now that, that since we brought up the revetment, the revetment when you get to the west, east and west, same as straightforward. You're putting it in Mr. Vecchio's property, and it's going to be behind the one. Okay. And have, have I covered? I mean, that's the focus of the project is the wall is the wall and the revetment. Correct. So we talked about the wall, where it is and where it is in the front. And the end of the front. Now, now we're talking about the revetment. Now, the revetment. And I think maybe this is a little bit of a side. But the revetment now. Here, I see, I see the investment. Now you've got that north south. That, that north south. That is that going to come as from this side? No. But, no, that's why uh, we need to get Pete involved, the neighbor, to apply for the permit because that sits on his property. And then it's going to go 
east to his seawall. Okay. It will, it, will, it will come north and south in front of the precast wall. It'll be like an L shape, and then it will go east to the to his existing seawall, and that's where it, that protects his, and it protects, like I say, Lake Shore Drive. Okay, no, because and again, the east, north, south. Correct. The the revetment intent is to go back and end up in line with his seawall, so, with Pete's seawall. Correct. Correct. So this may show it a little further south than what it would be. Right, because this was made off an aerial, you know, to give everybody a good visualization. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm sorry. I get confused easily. Pete's question was about the revetment or about the wall? Okay, the revetment that's on the diagram. According to what I see on this diagram, and according to the sketch that's been for the neighbor's super wall, it looks like it's going right to the seawall. Because it's cool. that, that, that seawall is kind of jagged, and I don't know where it is in the neighbor's seawall. If you look at it, I, do you, I don't know if you guys have diagrams in front of you. If you look at that seawall, I'm just visualizing the neighbor's reference. That's all I'm looking at. And when I look at the seawall that's put in there, it kind of sucks. Up. Close, you know, towards the lake, and then it says, and it only runs for short distance, and then it kind of gags down, and then it looks kind of broken and up. Broken up. And no. then it looks like that's where you're redundant. Where, where, where are you going to tie into that seal? Basically, so wait, you should probably wait till it puts this permanent. Basically, the rock would be. Like if you extended his his seawall beginning west, but the close if, if you extend the closest part to Lake Michigan, correct. You, so so like if 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 you, this was his seawall and you extended straight west, you just extend that straight. So would I don't know if we want to get into now the neighbor's project, but it's just for clarity. So you're saying then what the neighbor's going to want to do is extend that existing seawall that he has and correct what the jig jet stuff that's in there. No. And the, the seawall is not going to be changed at all. No. Nah. No. All it is is the rock revetment is going to go from 2948 to 2952 basically in line with that seawall so then to close that gap. Correct me what we were just saying. We were just talking that you, you originally had said that the revetment is about six foot. To get to, I'm just going to walk over. That's fine. And show show this picture, and then we can talk about this to get clarity. And I don't know. Does anybody else have this diagram? Or you're looking at computers. Yeah. Okay. And what I'm looking at, what I'm looking at, the neighbors and lots. If you look at that's what I'm talking about. It looks like a straight right line. Then all of a sudden it breaks out a little bit here, here, and then it brings a break down a little bit here. And then that's what my question is. Where, 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 Correct. It's about a hundred and thirty five, roughly. Right. I 
near where all of you are. This is 
Jimmy, give me a picture of one of those bigger blocks. Summarize what we're trying to do here, and I think Is it possible to approve the, the east west section on the north side? And this corner has to be resolved through a BZA meeting? I think it can. So, my, my concern is, and I, maybe I'm missing it, but did we get a coastal engineer to sign off on this at any point? I know we had, uh, and the engineer that designed it is a coastal engineer. He's not on your list, but he's designed this all over. This this piece right here, that is actually one picture, yeah. is on Lake Michigan and Benton Harbor. Yeah, my my concern is that our coastal uh, protection ordinance says that any coastal protection structure needs the sign off from a coastal engineer. 
sign off from the DNR and Army Corps. Well, it's got DNR and Army Corps permits were Good. submitted already. Perfect. Okay. So I guess my thought is we we probably need to have a postal engineer from our list sign uh -huh. off on it because the fact that it has a revetment means it's a coastal protection structure. You think that applies even be, even because it's behind the it's other sea wall? This is more like a retaining wall now. Well, it's a retaining wall, but then it has a revetment on. I I I, I don't feel good about saying this, believe me. But but if it has a revetment, it's a coastal protection structure, right? Doesn't okay. have to be. To me, the, the seawall out there is the coastal protection structure. The one that the, the one that runs the whole length there. I don't know how does that run. Runs well, hundreds of feet. Yeah. Both in both yeah. directions. That was well. I well, guess. I guess you know. It, it is a coastal protection structure. It's too low with the work with the height of Lake Michigan now, um, and that's why we're putting it in is because it's too low. So, yeah, I mean, you know, people are watching us, and we've got to make sure we dot all the I's and cross all the T's. And to me, this is this is a T. I, I think just from an outsider's perspective, the coastal engineering list the town has needs to be supplemented. I can tell you, two of them on the list don't even want to come look at anything. And there's other people that are coastal engineers, but they're not on your list. Do we do that at any time? Yeah. I, I missed what you said. Who is the uh, coastal engineer? This, and I can tell you, this Wolford Engineering that designed this, they are coastal engineers. Well, I can say, we could get Give me their information, we could look at that. Yeah, that, would, that might be a way around this. Yep. But to me, with, with Jim's imminent peril situation, we've got to do something yep. because one storm wipes them out. And I don't think anyone wants to see somebody lose a house. Okay. Now, I, I, don't, I don't want to debate the, the coastal engineering thing either, but I can tell you there's an engineer here in Michigan City that would debate with you all day long because 40 or 50 years ago, he designed everything, doing it all the way up and everything. And he said, you can do all the state research. There is no definition of a coastal engineer. Well, they are certified by the state of Illinois and Michigan. Indiana doesn't. Indiana doesn't. So, you know, that's what puts a little problem on it is, is you know, you got, you got local engineers that could perfectly do this work, but because Indiana doesn't designate a coastal engineer, no, we're okay. That's true. Which to me yeah. makes no sense, but. Well, yeah. Uh, but we've got the ordinance that we do have to abide by. But if you can give me the information on the coastal engineer, um, certified, I assume, by Michigan? Or, or Illinois. Or Illinois, yeah. Uh, but you said you had one already. So if you can get me that information, we could certainly, I think, uh, amend that list. Okay. Because that's really, I don't think that that's um, needs any real ratification. Um, it's you know it, 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 that's sort of a moving part of that ordinance uh, as companies go in and out of business or more are added. Jim Vecchio. Can't hear Pete. And so that that would be to within a foot and a half of the property line. Yeah. Is that okay? No, no, let me what are you calling the seawall? Is that the 
Well, seawall means a different term to me. I'm still a sheet pilot. To do this, me, I, to do this properly to protect Mr. Becchio's property, he needs to have the precast and the rock revetment. Yeah. So to me, being the one side of the 106 line, I think that would be key would be to approve the east-west wall on the north side, but then have the, I understand, I understand your setback. And some temporary measure, yeah, just like right now, some temporary measure, just like right now, we have yeah. temporary measure. Some temporary measure, 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 measure could be set to protect him, protect him, his, his plan for proper terms. Yeah. Proper terms. Yeah. 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 If the BZA denies it, it has to be removed, which but that would basically be the corner. Yeah, because everyone that goes on the on the north wall, and every one of sales should be part of the fine, correct? And the north. That'd be my thought. You know, again, I, and that, that all I think is pending on us confirming. Correct. Uh, and we need, you know, a sign off from the coastal engineer. Uh, first off, you know, his certification from whatever state, and then a letter from him saying that, yeah, this is the least uh, invasive way to protect this property. You know, and that's all spelled out in that uh, coastal protection order. Right, correct. So you can see exactly what he needs to give us. We still need to are, are we waiting for the National Board to have a watermark measure? That lady is going to be there tomorrow morning. I'm meeting her there tomorrow morning. So, so I mean, you know, know if you're approving something, something now, to me, it could still, still be contingent upon her report. report. I mean, I, I mean, I. I really worry, really worry about the property, property. So, so I hate to put too many, too many contingencies in the part that's inside the 106, 106. because from my understanding, 106, 106 is, is the line. No, no. It's 106 for the natural version of water, water, whichever is, uh, what I can't think of the right word, whichever is the protection. protection. So, uh, whichever is the protection. Which is the protection. Which is so it's one of the one that's keeping kind of safe Well, and, and then, of course, if we find that that natural ordinary high water mark that she draws is inside of the foot of the existing seawall, then we can have that argument then. Inside the sort of what is there's an existing seawall all the way across the front of that property. Oh, well, it is. All right. So you should, okay. Right. Okay, so there's a motion. Anybody second it? I'll second. Any other discussion? Everybody right. understands the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. aye. Opposed? So three in favor, one opposed. I think John Coker said oh, aye. Oh, John. I said aye. Say it louder, John. Aye. Aye. So four, four in favor, one of both. Sorry, John, I forgot you there. Um, Is that contingent on the natural order at Walmart? That's what we said. Yeah, that, that and the, uh, um, what was the other thing? Set back on the northeast corner. Um, Correct. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay inside the setback, and then temporary or inside the, that setback. Or the variance. Yeah, and of course, yeah, variance. Sure. That's going to be a whole another, whole another process. Wasn't was there, there another there? contingency though? No, no, that was it. Okay. Um, so we're good to go with that, and then the, so the next step is for you guys to submit a permit application on the part of. Actually, both of them are going to have to submit amended permit applications, right? Because the, the, the plan has changed now. Uh, and actually, you know, it's the best way to do it is to submit that to us. But you're under some time constraints. And so Very my much. recommendation to you would be to simply bypass us 
and go straight to the BCA with what you want to do. Don't you think? I mean, it's not the best way to do it, but it's going to get it done quicker. So when is the next BCA meeting? Do you know? Uh, I don't have my calendar, but the sooner you can get that into them, uh, the sooner, because they have a deadline as to, as to when they can do things. Bob? Yep. Um, as I'm looking at it and thinking about it, I think technically you probably should resubmit a, a, an adjusted permit for Mr. Vecchio yep. because how how are we handling and I'm just want I, I, I could be confused but we have the uh, revetment that's going on the north and south now where is that going to belong that that right now is in Mr. Beckett's Correct. But it will be on P2952's application. So that's what I'm saying. And Mr. Beckett's permit application should not have that on it. Because he's not, he's not asking for a permit. Okay. Am I correct? I want to make sure we're all talking. Yep. He is it for not Ms. Becky. Okay. Now, on, on your six foot side setback. Actually, it's a foot and a half. It's a foot and a half. Foot and a half. Okay. And I did think of that other contingency, and that is getting the uh, documentation on the coastal engineer. Okay. Um, So if even if you're repairing the wall that's already there, that whether it's property line or how many inches inside property line. So even though that wall was there and it's failed to repair that section, he still has to have a variance. The wall's gone now, right? In some places, yes. Yeah. Other places. Yeah, we had there. that issue once before, and I think we had a homeowner. <laughs> Okay. Similar to the variances that all the sheet pile sea walls did so they could interconnect, correct? Say it again. The, where the new sheet piles were driven, I remember being in a meeting where they all had to get a variance to connect the walls rather than maintain this. Okay. Just want to make sure uh, I'm understanding. Yeah, two, two of them did to, to put in their return walls. Right. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Issues we need to talk about about this property. Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll do that. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. Have a good day, everybody.